All right, so in this video, we're going to show you how to make a printable model after you've done an internal scan. So what you're going to do is launch the Three Shape Unite uh, software, and you can type in your patient's name and then select the patient. So you can click on the case, and where the three dots are on this uh, left side, you're going to click there to export, and you're going to select scans. This is going to um, allow you to choose the Z drive is where we're going to start and click on 3Shape, STL files. So this is a folder that will be saving your scan, um, internal scan files to. So you can create a new folder and we'll just call this ExoCAD model. So you're going to click on that folder and then you want to save as type and you're going to change that to STL. And then you can label this with your um, patient's initials if you want or their name. Um, and then we'll hit save. So when we go back to the Z drive, and let's check that the files are there. We'll go to STL files, ExoCAD model. And then we'll see the upper and lower scans saved to this folder. So the next step in this process is to launch the ExoCAD software. So you want to start with the one that's labeled EXO. So you can double click that. And the start screen will pop up. So for client, you want to just choose default. And then you can enter in the patient's name. And then we're going to move to uh, the right here where we can click on one of the upper teeth. And we're going to select adjacent tooth. And we'll hit OK. And then for the uh, lower, we can hit uh, one of the teeth there and just choose antagonist and this just allows us to set up the case uh, and we'll hit save here and once we hit save the model creator button here will be um, turned on and we can click on that to start building our model so this will launch the model creator module and now this is going to ask us to load the files that we had just created and saved through the trios uh, uh, software. So we'll click on Z Drive, 3Shape, STL files, and then find our patient folder. And then here it's asking us to load the upper jaw, so we find the corresponding scan. Then it'll ask us for the lower jaw, and we'll click on that scan. And this allows us to see both of the uh, scans uh, in the software. So the next step is to select model type and we're going to select Digital Wax Up Model. Here, we want to center the uh, model within those two planes here. The other thing we can do is if you hold down Control, it allows us to change the uh, angulation of our models, and we want to orient it so it's parallel uh, to those two planes. And you can see they have little lines here that help you visualize whether it's uh, parallel or not. So we can look from the frontal plane as, as, as well as the sagittal plane to get that lined up. And then if you just click on the uh, scans, you can move those in a vertical direction. Uh, if the scans are too tall, you can also toggle uh, the slider bar to get to the height that you need. And you just want something that is as close to the model uh, as they can be. So once that's set, you can hit next to move on. Okay, so this next step is to clean up our models. So if we have any bad data or islands or kind of uneven edges, we can start to trim those. Um, so I select the select only tool, and this is the easiest one to use, but you basically uh, left click and drag, and then you can circle any um, Areas that need to be cleaned up, and you can double click to uh, close the loop, and then from there you can hit delete to take out any areas that are unwanted. This scan already is pretty good, so there's not a lot of cleanup left to do. Um, and what we can do is turn off uh, this upper one so we could see the lower a little better, and then we can just clean this up a little bit and kind of get some smooth edges there. Okay. The other thing that you want to watch out for is if we turn off the uh, opposing tooth, you'll see little remnants of um, the model left over. And these are areas in which the teeth or the two casts are touching each other. And if we turn these back on, you'll see on the heel area, 
we have extra data here that is uh, touching each other that we actually don't want to keep. So if that occurs, um, we want to go back and take away that little area. So we're going to go back to the select only. We can draw a little circle around the little heel area, and then we're going to delete that. So this should allow us then to move on to uh, get casts that articulate accurately. So we'll hit next there. And it's going to pop up here, and you're, it's going to ask us to uh, cut away these intrusions. So we'll hit the uh, button that says Recommended. OK, from here, we're going to uh, highlight the lower bar here. And this will pop up where we want to click on Plateless Model Design. So from here, the upper jaw is selected, so we can hit Run. And this will add a platform to this scanned model. So now that this has completed, you can see that it has a nice platform that's attached to it uh, with a flat side that allows for us to print. Um, this also allows us to mount these models on an articulator if we so choose to do so. And then we'll hit OK. And this will save the model. The next step is to click on the opposing. And we can do the same thing and click on Plateless Model Design. And now the lower is selected. So we could hit Run, and that will add the base to the lower scan now as well. OK, so the lower is now completed. And then we'll hit OK. So now you can see the models for the upper and lower. And these will be highlighted under uh, this bar here. Um, and if we turn that off, you can see the original scans uh, that were imported. At this point, we can decide to just export this out. Um, or we can add some model attachments to it. So if we go to the bottom here, we can find model attachments. And there's a different types of model attachments that we can use. Uh, so one of the ones we can use is a support pin. And then we can click on the areas that we want to add these little support pins to. And you can uh, left click and drag those into the positions that you want. Uh, generally, three of these uh, will help stabilize the cast, especially if you're missing a lot of posterior teeth here and you're not able to tripodize uh, the case in MIP and it has a fulcrum line that will cause a rock. To get rid of these, if you don't want them, you can just click on each individual one and then hit the delete button to get rid of them. The other type of attachment that we can add is this X snap feature here. So we want to collect the standard fit. So we can click on the posterior area here to add the X snap. To rotate it, you're going to hit the control button and then you can click and then drag it so the extensions um, end up lining up with the cast there. And when it's sufficiently uh, overlapped with the cast, it'll turn from red to yellow. That means it's in a good position. Uh, if you wanted to move it laterally, you can just click and then drag it into the position that you want. So once that's set, you can click on the other side. And it'll add a second feature here. And now these are now linked together, meaning if you wanted to rotate, you're going to click control again, but it's going to move both at the same time now because they need to be lined up in order to articulate correctly. So you can rotate it so that they're in approximately the right position. And then you can left click and then drag. You can move laterally independently, but if you're going to move in this direction, forward or back, it moves both at the same time. So it takes a little finessing to get both lined up in the uh, correct orientation. And again, as long as both are yellow, then uh, it'll allow us to build the model. So we can see from this view um, that things are intersecting correctly. And then you do want to try to minimize how much this extension sticks out posteriorly uh, so we save some space uh, on our print bed and we can allow uh, for minimal use of the print resin. So once the, these are attached, uh, we can then click on text and this is to add our patient's name. So 
So I'll select all and hit copy. And then we should be able to click on the add text and then click on the cast to add our name. And then you can change the size if it doesn't fit well. And then to add it for the bottom, we're gonna have to hit add text again and we can paste the name and then click on the bottom cast and then put it in the correct position. So it's important to put the name on the cast, otherwise if we were to print it without the name, we wouldn't know um, how to track what patient those teeth belong to. So once that's done, you can hit OK, and this will finalize our model. So the recommendation of choosing which attachment to have, if you want to mount these on the semi-adjustable articulator, um, you can print these out without any attachments here, and then you can just add plaster to the uh, top platform here to secure it to uh, the mounting plates. The addition of these support pins are helpful when you're trying to uh, mount an articulator in that scenario that we had talked about when you're unable to tripodize um, and get a stable MIP record. If you're doing just basic treatment planning where you're not uh, needing to mount it on a semi-adjustable articulator, um, it's acceptable to add these X-snap uh, features to it because this allows you to at least have a hinge where you can open and close and then do some minor excursive movements uh, to it. So once the model has been completed, you can click on wizard here and this will say that I'm done and then we can hit the next button to export out the file. It's gonna bring us back to the start menu where you can open up the uh, Explorer here. And what you can do is um, select both of these files here um, that say digital wax up model and then we'll copy that. We're gonna to wanna to put that into the Z drive. So you're gonna hit Z drive and then click on models to print. And then from here, you're going to paste this file into the Models to Print folder. Um, you can click on the file name to rename it, and we're going to rename this uh, with the patient's name. Pay attention to the numbers here at the very end. You see how this says 17, the other says 47. Um, this is the international numbering system where the first number is the quadrant that we're working in, and then seven happens to be the tooth that we had selected when we originally set it up. All that being said, this tells us which is the maxillary cast and which is the mandibular cast, so you wanna label those properly. So we'll put exocad model, and then we'll type in max, and then four seven is the fourth quadrant, or the lower right quadrant, and then the seventh tooth that we had Selected is the second molar, but we're going to relabel that exocad model mandibular. So this kind of uh, so this concludes our tutorial on how to turn air intral scan into a printable model.